This is the Great Gate of Trinity College, Cambridge. Trinity was established by Henry VIII in 1546 by merging two older colleges, Michael House and King's Hall, together with some smaller entities. I'm going to tell you a story about the cobbles that form the approach to Great Gate. So before this part of Great Court was built in 1557, there was a road that went all the way from Trinity Street down to the river. And it's possible that the cobbles here were reused from that road or they were laid down when Great Gate itself was built. Can you see how very flat the cobbles are? This tells us they've seen a lot of use over the years. Now the material used here was chosen because it's very hard and resistant. So the fact that all the cobbles have large flat top surfaces really emphasises the amount of traffic they've seen. Horses, carts, people. It's unlikely that all that traffic passed right here, particularly since carts couldn't get down the steps just through Great Gate into college. My guess is that many of them were reused from the old road leading down to the river. As a geologist, what jumps out at me is the range of different rock types. So there are lots of flints here, and these flints come from the chalk, which is abundant in the Cambridge area. And it's not surprising to find them here in a city where lots of the old buildings have got flints in their construction. But look at these dark grey ones. These are made of basalt, so they must have come from a lava flow. And this bit of basalt here is particularly interesting because it's filled with bubbles. So this one must have come from the top of the lava flow where the gas dissolved in the lava could start to escape. And this is a granite. Now granites form by the slow solidification of silica-rich magma deep underground. And they mainly form in the roots of mountain belts. And mountain belts are the result of continental collision. So we get granites forming today underneath the Himalayas and the Alps. But in Northern Europe, we get granites at the surface because the mountain belts in this part of the world are so ancient that the tops of the mountains have eroded completely away. Here we've got some metamorphic rocks. We've got a range from relatively low temperature rocks like these banded schists to those which have been heated up to more than 700 degrees centigrade. So they've actually started to melt like these ones here. These are also from the deeply eroded roots of ancient mountain belts. But it's this kind of rock which really catches the eye. Look, it's dark reddish brown and it's studded with these large pale crystals. The popular name for this is Rom Porphyry. So this rock's a lava, like the basalt, but it's got a different composition. And it forms when you start stretching continental crust. These big crystals here are of a mineral called potassium feldspar. And they're so big because they grew when the lava itself was still deep underground, cooling slowly. And the fine-grained, brownish-red ground mass, that's what solidified once the lava was cooling quickly after eruption. Now, there's no rock like this anywhere in the United Kingdom, let alone near Cambridge. What's really significant is that apart from the flints, these are all rocks that must have come from places hundreds of miles away from Cambridge. The nearest high-grade metamorphic rocks are in Scotland. The nearest basalts are in the Lake District or on the floor of the North Sea. But perhaps what's most interesting is the Rom Porphyry. This is a very rare rock type, and it's found only in Antarctica, East Africa, and Norway, near Oslo. So road building in medieval times would have involved the use of material that was cheap and ready to hand. These cobbles must have come from close by. So the big question is how material from Scotland and Norway made its way to the Cambridge region, all jumbled together for easy collection by the road builders. Unlike more modern areas of cobbling in Cambridge, which use trimmed stones with a square or rectangular shape, these cobbles are variable in shape and size. We're looking at natural materials that haven't been modified by the road builders, but just used as they found them. Can you see how many of them are triangular? This shape's characteristic of rock fragments shaped by transport in a glacier. This medley of different rock types, now forming the Trinity Cobbles, was collected together from a vast area of Northwest Europe and brought here by huge glaciers during the Ice Age. During the greatest recent glaciation, almost half a million years ago, most of Northern Europe was covered in ice. Sea level was 120 metres lower than it is today and the North Sea was mainly dry. 
Critically, a continuous sheet of ice flowed from southern Norway down through Denmark and northern Germany and across where the North Sea is now, reaching the northern part of East Anglia. Somewhere along its route, perhaps off the east coast of what's now Yorkshire, it was joined by an ice stream moving south from Scotland. And this ice covered the UK as far south as London. Glaciers carry enormous loads of rock collected from their source and added to by erosion of the rocks they pass over. All this material gets dumped at the end of the glacier. The vast ice sheet of half a million years ago ended up dumping material both brought down from Scotland and all the way from Norway, close to Cambridge. The material dropped by the glaciers all those years ago is now mostly eroded away and is intact only on the tops of hills. There used to be lots of easily accessible deposits around Cambridge, but almost all of these have now been built on and covered over. The nearest remaining deposits here on the top of Little Trees Hill on the Gog Magog Hills. This beautiful landscape is inverted. Rapid erosion as the ice retreated scraped away masses of the chalk to form new valleys. So the top of the hill where I'm standing used to be the valley bottom along which the glacier flowed. This is an ancient quarry where people took out hard chalk known as clunch to use as a building stone but there's still a lot of glacial debris left, which has recently been pushed to one side in an effort to increase biodiversity on this really important chalk landscape. The sediment that glaciers form is called till, and till is a mixture of fine-grained material that's formed as the ice grinds away at the rocks it's flowing over, and boulders and cobbles of the harder rocks it encounters on its flow path. A lot of the cobbles here are just flint and chalk derived locally, but look at this one. This one's granite. This has come from hundreds of miles away. So here in Cambridge, the scientific significance of these glacial deposits was recognised in the 19th century. And they made detailed collections at the gravel pits up Huntington Road at Traveller's Rest. And from nearby villages such as Barton, Comberton, Barrington, um, to see if they could identify all the different rock types that were found in the till. And while it was pretty obvious immediately that the Ron Porphyry had to have come from Oslo, what they found is that they could identify the precise source of many of the other different types of rock. They identified other rock types from Scandinavia, as well as material from the Lake District, the Cheviot Hills and further north into Scotland, using detailed examination of sections of the rock so thin that they become translucent. So this is the kind of detailed, careful work that underpins our understanding of how climates change through Earth history. And it can also be used to help us work out what might lie in store for us in the future. The Trinity Cobbles aren't the only example of medieval road buildings still here for us to see in Cambridge. Here on Honey Hill, behind the Punter's Pub and joining Northampton Street to Maddenley Road, we can see the remains of a medieval passageway. The cobbles here have been repaired and replaced in places with trimmed stones, but we can still see the same assemblage of metamorphic rocks, granites, basalts, and again, the Rom porphyry from Norway. This medieval road must have been made from the same deposits of glacial debris as the Trinity cobbles. There are many other examples in Cambridge hidden in plain view, along the quays side of Senate House Passage and forming the walls of many of the medieval churches, like Michael House Church in Trinity Street. I'm just one of many people who found the story of these cobbles fascinating. Tresillian Nicholas was a geologist and fellow of Trinity, and he also was delighted by the presence of the unmistakable Oslo Rom Porphyry at Trinity, and the knowledge of how far the ice had brought it. One of the porphyry cobbles, perhaps the easiest to find as you walk out of college into Trinity Street, was his favourite. Towards the end of his long life, he asked for his initials to be carved into it, but unfortunately Tresillian didn't live to see it. It remains here as a monument to a well-loved and highly respected member of the college. There are a lot of people telling us to look up and appreciate our surroundings, but actually there's a strong case for looking down at our feet and the ground we're walking over. <laughs>